Rack and Fin Radio with Tom P. WPG Talk Radio 95.5. It is on this fourth day of October 2023. Order that. Plaintiff's application, plaintiffs as in Lesniak and his ilk, for an orderly preliminary and joining defendants from A, proceeding with a bear hunt scheduled to begin on October 9th, 2023 and December 4th, 2023, and B, implementing the comprehensive black bear management plan and the code amendments approved by the council on September 6th, 2023, is denied! Yes, there will be a bear hunt starts Monday. This order shall be deemed filed and served upon uploading on e-courts. Robert Lugie, AJSC, October 4th. Yes, the bear hunt will happen. And try to appeal. Who knows? Hey, you're inside Rack and Fin Radio with me, Tom P. It is the weekend of October 7th and 8th. It's uh, it's a great day. Again, a happy New Year. Season opens in a parallel universe of Rack and Fin Radio. Indeed, calls for a New Year celebration. Get out and get that bear permit, $2, because there are some monsters roaming in those five bear hunting zones. Join us on the line right now. Always in the thick of it up there in Sussex County. Republican 24th District, Assemblyman Parker Space, will be running for state senate uh, next month in November. He's going to kick some ass. Tell us about the Bears Assemblyman. This hunt's going to finally take place after all this BS going on. And you have lots of big Bruins up there. Yogi and Boo Boo are on a tear, Parker. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, I mean, it's not uncommon. It, literally every day you're driving down the road and you're seeing, you know, these big Bruins crossing in front of you. Uh, complaints from the neighbors, you know, not just overturning garbage cans, but actually going into people's houses. You have... You know, ladies bringing a load of groceries home. They take a load in the house. They come back out to the car for another load, and there's bears in the back of their car stealing the stuff. So, I mean, we the, the judge made the right decision. We can't let our emotions rule over good common sense. You know, we need mm-hmm. control to control a healthy population. Well, Parker, the other thing, too, they wanted to change the – they said the configuration of the fishing game council was unconstitutional, even though it's been upheld in court previously – as uh, Larry Herity, former director, now he is the secretary with the New Jersey Outdoor Alliance, explained last week in some detail on Rack and Fin Radio. But they just keep trying. Parker, it's the, they don't they don't care if it takes 500 years. Their goal is to outlaw not only bear hunting, but hunting and fishing and trapping across the board. You, do you see that in Trent at all among uh, the Democrats across the aisle? I, I, quite a few of them, you know, they come from these urban districts where they don't have to deal with the bears. They have, they've probably never seen a wild bear, you know, out in the woods before where we have to deal with it on a daily basis. So it's a different, you know, setting and environment. They have this Disney persona that they're these big fluffy creatures that are going to come up and butterflies land on their nose. You know, these <laughs> things can be dangerous. Animals, you know, and they need to be controlled. And part of the destruction I personally viewed in areas of Sussex and areas of Warren and also northern Hunterdon, cornfields, assembly space that are, big portions are literally flattened, bear scat all over the place. And for the one farm I spoke to up there off Route 31, uh, I'd say right there on the, on the Warren Hunterdon border, just shrugged the shoulders and there's really nothing you can do about it. They're, they're just everywhere. Yeah, you know, a, a, a hungry bear and a lazy bear, they're the same thing. So they're going to take the easiest source of food or in, a, in a cornfield where they can just roll around and not even get up. And right here in this northwest part of the state, we have the highest density of black bears per square mile than any place in the whole country, even more than Alaska. Alaska has more black bears, but we have more per square mile right here in northwest New Jersey. And like I said, it's a control factor. And if we don't control a healthy population of, you know, deer or, or raccoons or foxes, whatever it is, Mother Nature will. And we don't want a bunch of sickly bears coming in. So I'd much rather see them harvested, you know, put on the table. And plus, it mm-hmm. stimulates the economy up here. It's huge. You know, people come up sure. and stay in the hotels. They go to the delis. They, you know, use the taxidermy and butchers and that kind of stuff. So it's a win-win situation. Parker, yeah. I've seen... Uh... Uh, your area, right there along, well, not exactly in your part of the area, Sussex, but Route 15 and about down by Sparta and stuff. Bear road kills. I've seen bear road kills on 287 uh, down there in Somerset County. So the toll, not only from the vehicles, but the uh, economic damage to the farms and whatever, they, they are really a liability. 
Oh, yeah, we get called every because we have you know bidded contracts for picking up roadkill deer, which ultimately the good ones we feed to animals here at, at the zoo. But we get calls every single day on roadkill bear, which we don't pick up, but we just do the deer. But they still notify us, the people, the residents, thinking that we're going to go out and, and get them. So we just notify the state, and they lay there for a few days or a week, and then they finally pick them up. I just don't understand. I, and I've asked some some uh, antis, and and some who are even not not opposed to hunting, but for some reason, some reason opposed to bear hunting, saying, "Well, if you just had bear proof garbage cans and no bird feeders, and you didn't cook outside on your grill, the problem will go away." I said, "Are they still not going to reproduce?" Yeah, but the number of cubs they'll have will be less. I said, "But they're still going to reproduce." And the non-lethal management doesn't work. Then they come up with Parker. I like this. Repeating Parker, Space Republican, 24th District up there in Sussex, Warren, parts of Hunter County. Hunter, well, we, there there is birth control. We can try that. Hunter, how do you not smack your head a hundred times and say, how do these people not get hurt every day? Yeah, I mean, they, once again, they just don't get it. You know, they, they don't realize what it is, you know, living up in, in bear country. And... I just keep going back. We have to maintain a healthy population because bears are territorial also. You have, you know, the young males that are driven out by the, the bigger males. They're going to go into the neighborhoods. They're the ones that are going to be causing destruction and mayhem, you know, throughout the mm-hmm. throughout the towns. And so if we can control them and maintain a healthy uh, population of them, which is misunderstood by Wesniak and his whole group of tree huggers, oh, really? is, that, is that with the – you know, the Fish and Game Council, with with them believing there's too many sportsmen on there, sportsmen are the people that want to maintain, you know, an environment where you can go out into the woods and take your kids and your grandkids out and, you know, go deer hunting and go turkey hunting. Mm-hmm. And those guys don't realize the Wesniaks and all of them. You don't have to go shoot something every time you're out. It's enjoying the outdoors and the natures. You know, you might be going on a bear hunt. And you could be seeing turkeys coming through or, or right. you know, an eagle flying over anything else. It's just experience the outdoors. And that's why Fish and Game Council wants to make sure that the it stays at a level population for 100 years to come, you know, and they're not going to annihilate any sort of a species. But they just don't get it. Seven of uh, the hunters, trappers, and anglers are the true conservationists. I mean, we pay. The money speaks for itself. The millions upon millions of dollars pay for for habitat that not only uh, benefits the game animals themselves but also birds insects the whole nine yards we're the true conservationists the true environmentalists it gets my ass in the air when i see this when you read again reporters conservationists environmentalists are against the hunt well how do you define environment environmentalists and conservationists if they're against the hunt that's just a pre- it's, uh, yep. it's a, a part Drives me crazy. Oh man! <laughs> but you have uh, one no, great they, reporter up that up that way. A guy named Bruce Scruton, I believe, or Scruton. I don't know how he pronounces his last name. He is on it, man. Oh, Bruce is on it. Yeah, I, I talked to Bruce quite a bit. Okay, Parker. Before I let you go, again, good luck in the upcoming Senate race. And we have a few seconds. Give us a lowdown on an incredible space farms, man. What's the dealio? Uh, we're still open for another month. We'll be open through the first week of uh, November. Uh, this is our 96th season this year. You know, wow. it's the longest owned family tourist attraction still owned by the original family. You know, my grandparents, my dad, now it's my wife and I, my son and his wife work here. We have grandsons. So we have five generations, you know, working at, have been working at the family business. But we got, you know, lions, tigers, bears, leopards, jaguars, monkeys, kangaroos, you know, 50 antique cars, old wagon sleighs, Indian yeah. artifacts, a little bit of everything. You have to come up and visit us. Barger, how ironic. I found in, uh shout out to Joe Bauer and his dad, Joe Bauer, who used to work with uh, fishing game, back then in fish game and shell fisheries. Found an old issue from, the, I think, the early, early 70s or late 60s. I guess from your granddad. It was a Fred Sp- about uh, raising a bear cub. It was the yep, old fishing been... game. It was 10 cents, New Jersey outdoors, rather. And there was a whole story in there. He wrote a great story. How to, the toilet, how to use a litter box and everything. Yep. Yeah, that was probably my dad. Yeah, yeah. He was actually chairman of Fishing Game Council for quite a few years. Wow. Okay, Parker, thanks again. Congratulations to all. Bear Hunt is on. Go get that permit. Jersey Bears rule, man. We are the biggest and the baddest. Parker, you take care. Good luck in November. 
All right. Thanks, sir. Take care. And there you go. Common sense and the rule of law finally prevail. The antis, but they're going to keep coming. Trust me. They're going to keep coming. They'll go try some cider and baiting and this and that. It's a never-ending fight. They're going to Federation of Sportsmen's Clubs, New Jersey Outdoor Alliance, and the United Bow Hunters in New Jersey. It, it, gotta, you got to face them. Send that check, man. Get involved. Be right back. Rack and Fin Radio. Whoa, what's coming up? What's coming up? This week, too? It starts a two-week fall trout stocking program is getting underway this Tuesday. Be right back. Rack and Fin Radio. WPG Talk Radio 95.5 FM and 1450 AM. South Jersey's talk station. Next question. This place is known for its extraordinary financial services since 1902. Contestant three. Um, Motion First Bank? Oh, nice try. Sorry, everyone. The answer we were looking for is Ocean First Bank. Ocean. Ocean First. But the good news is everyone goes home a winner with convenient access to deposit services, mortgage loans, business financing solutions, and digital banking options for business and personal accounts. Through local branches and online banking, your needs always come first at Ocean First Bank. Now get 5.25% APY when you open a six-month CD with at least $10,000 of new money to Ocean First. Learn more. Open yours with a local branch or at OceanFirst.com. Restrictions apply. Equal housing lender, equal opportunity lender, member FDIC. Make this fall a season to remember at BetMGM, the king of online casinos. Casinos. Get things rolling right now with a 100% deposit match up to $1,000 plus a $25 casino bonus when you sign up with bonus code BUFFALO. Enjoy casino action at your fingertips and the same Las Vegas Strip excitement MGM is famous for when you play classic games like MGM Grand Millions or our most popular slot, Buffalo. Now available on BetMGMCasino.com. Download the BetMGM Casino app today and get a piece of the action with daily promotions, live dealers, and much more. BetMGM reminds you to play responsibly and offers resources to help you make appropriate choices. Gambling problems? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Must be 21 plus. New Jersey only. Please gamble responsibly. BetMGM.com for T's and C's. All promotions are subject to qualification and eligibility requirements. Rewards issued as non withdrawable side credit bonus bets unless otherwise provided by applicable terms. Rewards subject to expiry. Rack and Fin Radio with Tom P. WPG Talk Radio 95.5. Okay, that was uh, a little early uh, Happy New Year thing, opening segment with the Bears season opening Monday. Another Happy New Year going out starting Tuesday. Yep, the fall trout stocking season is underway. Okay, here's the skinny on this dealio. The autumn total going out is 20,670. Now, these are two-year-old rainbows averaging 14 to 16 16.5 inches in length, up to two pounds. There's also some breeders going out. There's going to be, let's see, approximately maybe um, a thousand breeders. There's 36 streams and lakes, north, central, and south, that will be stocked. And let's see, 20 counties involved. Cape May County left out, but that's in November. The Great Ponda Lodge Pond will be getting hit. Okay, October 10th in the Rack and Fin radio listening area. Going to be stocked Monday, as a Tuesday rather, the Matitaconk North Branch 150, the South Branch of Matitaconk 260, the Toms River 250, and the Toms River Trout Conservation Area 100. Now, the South Jersey waters are really not going to be hit until the second, let's see, this is going on the, yeah, the Tuesday, October 17th. Here we go. Gian Petro Park Pond 170, Hamilton Lake 230. Mary Elmer Lake 210, Morris River 170, Crystal Lake 220, Grenlock Lake and Oak Pond 170 each, and also Sylvan Lake 170. And then we have, man, this just keeps going how the Bureau of First Order Fisheries is kicking ass. Wednesday, October 18th, you have Greenwich Lake 190, Iona 210, Shadler Sandwash 160, Swedesboro Lake 210. So there are plenty of trout going out to the central and south Jersey waters. Man, he's, you know, you're always used to the one year old fish from the hatch, one and a half year old, whatever, going out every spring. How do they get these rainbows to this size 
for the fall stocking and also the winter stocking, which is November. We'll join us on a rack of fin live and our very special guest, Pequest Trout Hatchery Superintendent Ed Conley, talking about these rainbows going out. They are in great shape. And Ed, I'll tell you, I've seen these fish. This is going to, and the water levels are perfect, people. This is going to be a bang up fall stocking, brother. How you doing? Good. How are you, Tom? I'm locked, cocked, and ready to rock. I got bear season going on. I got north zone. I got duck season going to be starting. I got squirrel season going on. I got rap season going on. The, the the saltwater bite here is really taking off. Ed, I'm like an amoeba, paramecium. I'm split in a thousand places right now. <laughs> but I'm really fired up for the trout. Ed, to you and crew, fantastic, incredible, superlative job as always. Ed, getting these two-year-olds ready, when did this process actually start? Those eggs... So the fish that are going out the next two weeks. When did that? When did this happen? Uh, they were eggs in 2021. Uh, watch, we actually take eggs uh, uh, mostly September and October, and uh, basically these are eggs from two years ago. And now, how long to hatch? And then they're reared where? And, and the, when do they get moved to different tanks? What's the dealio? Uh, basically these fish, uh, what's called, they take about, uh, 30 days to hatch and then they're raised in the tanks for about six months. And then they, when there's space available out on the raceways, they get moved out and, uh, they'll spend the rest of their time in the raceways for up until they're two years old. Uh, the fall fish are they're raised at a lower density, uh, in order to get a little bigger size to them. Right, Ed, I noticed the growth seems to accelerate. They hit a certain size and then boom. I mean, it's, it's the, almost like in a socket. Now they're thin, then all of a sudden they take off. So great job on these. So they're, they're constantly moved and uh, and they are ready to be stocked. Now the trucks are going to be loaded when? That Monday, Tuesday, what? Uh, we'll start loading trucks on Tuesday the 10th. And these, now you have lands management and hatchery guy, hatchery personnel rather doing this? Yep. Uh, the hatchery guys, we load the trucks in the morning and uh, the lands management personnel bring them out to your favorite spots. And down here, central and south Jersey, especially like Swedesboro Lake, Iona, how does that, how, the logistics involved in that, how does that work? Uh, guys... You know, we start loading trucks early in the morning, like 7 a.m., and then uh, they make their way down. And then uh, some of the areas in the south, uh, you know, basically somebody meets the truck or that and helps down there in the south or, or uh, you know, a couple guys run from the north. So, yeah, uh, no, I've every, seen, yeah, I've seen some of the Peak West trucks down here uh, in November, especially right behind the studio here, Birch Grove Park Pond. I think the driver the last time I saw was uh, Jimmy Hardaby. And he had, there you go, man. And he had a crew down here from the truck. Now, I've also seen at Tuckahoe Lake and other venues, Ponder Lodge Pond and some other spots where they have the transfer trucks. So that's a, that's a pretty seamless operation because everything seems to go fine. The listeners, these October trout, you're going to have a great time. Get that trout stamp. Get some ultralight tackle, get some power bait, get some salmon eggs, get some spinners, and get it done. Because Ed, these fish is just going to be a, it's just going to be a grand two weeks, man. This, and then these fish will hold over. So especially in the South Jersey water, once the water is cold, you'll be able to catch these fish through the winter. And there's probably not going to be any ice here. So right through the winter, you have trout fishing opportunities. Great job. Now, Conley, let's get to the bonus breeders. I understand there's uh, approximately 1,000 or so in the mix here. Correct. Uh, up to 1,000 will be stocked during the two-week period here. And uh, they're an average length of 19.2 inches. We just took the lengths <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> That's and, the average? <laughs> uh, yeah, oh. yeah. And the range on them is uh, 17 inches to 22.2 inches. So you have fish potentially five to seven pounds in the mix. Yep. Listen, this is a win-win all around. So, Ed, now the, the total number – of trout that the hatchery counting the spring stock now it's a listen, it's an amazing number in the spring you were actually over baseline by thousands again correct correct how do you keep it going Conley? How do, how, now when do you realize in that seven in week stocking program that you're going to have surplus fish uh it's yeah it's about week five in season that we uh we kind of know uh it's we can just kind of you know, we get to that point, we can tell that we're going to have some extras available. 
Listeners, this is going to be a great, great fall stocking again. It kicks off on Tuesday, October 10th in the Rackman Radio area. The South Branch and North Branch and Matitacon getting 260, 150 respectively. And the Toms getting 250 and the Toms River TCA. Now that goes from Riverwood Park to 571, just off the Garden State Parkway there. That's going to get 100. And then a lower stretch, especially plenty of holdovers. We'll go into the South Jersey stocking more next week. Hey, Conley, great job again to you and that crew up there at Peak West. Keep it going, brother. And I'm going to get your ass back on for the winter stocking in November because listen, the fish are going to get even bigger, right? I thought they put on a little couple extra ounces or, you know, a little length in there that extra few weeks. What, five yeah. weeks, six weeks? Yeah, they might be slightly a little bit heavier, uh, you know, a little bit more length. So, so now uh, the gears are already working for spring, right? The spring 2024 stocking, you guys just don't stop, man. <laughs> yep, yep. They always have three-year classes on site, so we're uh, constantly busy here. Three-year classes? No. Wow. Wow. Okay, Conley. Hey, we'll talk to you in a few weeks, man. You take care. All right. Uh, Have a good one, Tom, and uh, good luck to everyone out there. It is going to be glorious, glorious fall trout. See you later, Eddie. Bye. Bye. Some job and a lot of fun. Get the youngsters involved. Take some kids. They say, ah, Tom Pena, it's spring. The trout are only 10 inches or so. Lasso onto one of these, especially some of these breeders. Now, a percentage, I think it's 1% or 2%, whatever, of every load gets a breeder. Or two or three. So there are going to be some big, big fish out there. We'll get more into this next week, man. But just uh, this week, this week for Tom P, I'm going to, I'm probably going to vaporize all 300 pounds of me. That'll be a sight. Be right back. Rack and Fin Radio. WPG Talk Radio 95.5. Fox on film. I'm Michelle Polino. The Exorcist Believer hits theaters, directed by David Gordon Green. It brings Ellen Burstyn back, reprising her role from the original film as Chris McNeil. As the parents of demonically possessed girls, desperate for help, search for the only person alive who has had similar experiences, McNeil. The Marsh King's Daughter is a tense thriller about a woman with a secret past who ventures into the wilderness she left behind to confront the most dangerous man she's ever met, her father. Helena's seemingly ordinary life hides a dark and dangerous truth. Her strange father is the infamous Marsh King, the man who kept her and her mother captive in the wilderness for years. And The Burial stars Jamie Foxx and Tommy Lee Jones in a true story about a personal injury lawyer from Mississippi who took on the case of Jeremy. Maya O'Keefe, an owner of a local chain of funeral homes who claims he had been cheated by a major funeral parlor conglomerate. That's Fox on Film on Fox News. Hey there, business owners and creative minds. Are you ready to take your brand to the next level? Look no further than Copiers Plus and CP Creative's Vehicle Wrap Division. Picture this, your company's logo, message, and brand displayed proudly on the move, reaching thousands of potential customers every day. That's the power of vehicle wraps. Copiers Plus and CP Creative are teaming up to offer you a one-stop solution for all your printing, copying, and creative branding needs. Our expert designers and technicians work hand-in-hand to transform your vision into stunning, eye-catching vehicle wraps. The process was seamless. From concept to installation, they exceeded my expectations. Now, my company's personality shines brightly wherever I go. Contact them at 609-645-7587 or visit copiersplus.com. Elevate your brand on the move with Copiers Plus and CP Creative. Your success is their business. Rack and Fin Radio with Tom P. WPG Talk Radio 95.5. Yeah, we're back inside Rack and Fin Radio with me, Tom P. This lovely weekend, despite the weather, October 7th and 8th. Well, man, you know, you know bird hunting is getting close when DEP's Fish and Wildlife is stocking 11 wildlife management areas for dog training purposes. No, not Bob White's uh, Pasadena and Greenwood. No, not Renex. They are stocking chuckers. Hey, to me, bird aroma is bird aroma. I've spoken with many guys and some gals that have their dogs out there training. No difference, man. That's perfect locking it on. There's been a great program going on for I don't know how many years. Want to get some more information. 
They stock 11 wildlife management areas now up north. It's Black River, Clinton, Peak West, and Whittingham. In the rack and fin radio listening area, terrestrial radio. And at Central, you have Aspen Pink, Collier's Mills. Boy, does that place get crazy on a Saturday. Whoa. Manasquan and the Forge, a.k.a. Stafford Forge. In the south, it's Glassboro, Millville, and in the Cape May County vernacular dialect, Tuckahoe. Wildlife Management, I still call up McNamara from way back when. Join us online right now, very special guest, good friend of Rack and Fin Radio. It is Nate Figley. He is a regional superintendent, lands management with DEPs, fish and wildlife. He is uh, running this stocking program, getting it underway. Nate, that I know it started today. It's going to be running uh, Saturdays through the 28th. Good job, brother. Tell us about it. How long has this been going on and what's the dealio? Morning, Tom. How you doing? How am I doing? How am I doing? Come on! <laughs> it's October, man. So I, I'm not quite sure on when this program started, but it's been going on ever since I've been with the division. And like you mentioned, that's about 20 years now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's a really good program. It's a good opportunity for um, hunters to get their dogs out in the field early to you know brush some of that dust off and uh, get them ready for the upcoming pheasant and quail and small game seasons that begin in November. Okay, listen, birds are stocked for today. There's also stock for the 14th, 21st, and 28th. Okay, Nate. Well, Nate, I remember way back when, up until a few years ago, it was uh, the stock in the program involved pheasants, and the switchers made the chuckers. And uh, it seems to be a win-win. I talk to people that have been training their dogs, and, and they say, man, it, it's working fine. Yeah, so the the main reason we switched over to chuckers um, is because pheasants tend to like to run before they flush. Oh, yeah. And when they flush, they also fly a lot further than what a chucker typically flies. So one of the goals is to keep, you know, those birds within that dog training area where they're being stocked for as, as long as we possibly can. So by going with chuckers, you know, the shorter flights and less running um, constitutes to have those birds stay there longer. Right. It uh, makes for giving, yeah. giving the users more opportunity to flush birds. Again, I was just say great training opportunities. You can, you can uh, spend the time out there because the chuckers are going to fly. They're going to stop. They're going to drop. They're going to walk a little bit. They're going to fly. They're going to drop. So you can, you can basically spend the day out there if, if your dog or you, you know, are up to it. But hey, so the actual stocking procedure, what's the deal? Just go up to a field edge, open the crates and away they go. What do you do? So we try and spread them out throughout the different dog training areas as much as possible. Uh, and we don't, we won't put multiple birds in one spot. And the reason for that is you want to, again, spread out the opportunity for as many um, dog handlers as possible. You know, give mm-hmm. as many dogs as many opportunities to flush birds. And if you go in and you flush half a dozen birds at one time and now they scatter all over the place, um, each time you flush them, each successive flush, at some point they're going to start moving away from the main stocking area and they're going to be harder and harder to find. So the idea is to spread them out and um, basically you hand plant them is is what we refer to it as. So you drive around the perimeters of the fields and the, you know, who's ever stocking may pull a bird out at a time. They'll run out, you know, a couple 20, 30 yards out into a field, find a thick area of brush and put them in under it. Man, that's kind of labor intensive in tick country and chigger country this time of year, isn't it? <laughs> the, the good news is I hear there is some frost coming, hopefully. Um, yeah, this should yeah. uh, reduce the chigger. <laughs> <laughs> man, they are, they are torch. I've seen big muscle grown men, guys who can clean out a bar with a couple of swings, get to their knees and cry when they had chiggers, man. <laughs> Always in the fall. Of it. Hey, Nate, do these uh, chuckers hold over? I mean, are any uh, any instances guys bagging them when the when the uh, actual uh, bird season opens? You will hear, hear of a few here and there um, that will make it into the uh, regular stocking season. Yep. Now, as I've seen some of these chuckers get up and fly, maybe you know, ten yards and drop down again. And I've seen some that you know, sort of like a pheasant, will go a distance, but they always seem they 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 almost like a quill. They'll, they'll come sort of. Come, Gra- regravitate back to the area where they were put in. Like, didn't we just didn't we just put a bird up there? Maybe how many hours ago or something? So it's a it's a win win all around with the chuckers. 
And they're a lot less expensive, aren't they? <laughs> they are cheaper. Um, they are, I want to say they're about half the, the price of a pheasant. So you get more bang for your buck. Uh, you get to stock more birds that way. Um, so you're, you're putting more birds out there than you could if you were just going with pheasant. Okay, Ned. So this is, again, Chucker stock for today and also the 14th, 21st, and 28th. The Rackethin Radio area, Assenpink, Collier's Mills, Manasquan, Stafford Forge. In the south, we have Glassboro, Millville, and Tuckahoe, a.k.a. McNamara. Plenty of birds are out there. Hey, the cover's still thick. It's going to uh, be, as Nate said, a frost is coming. It's going to be thinning out. The colors are already starting to happen. The, the um, autumn splendor, as I call it. Opportunity, get your dogs out there. And get some training in. He said, get the rust off, get the dust off. I'll tell you, Nate, I've, I've just gone to some, some of these tracks, north, central, and south, and watch. You see some great dog work. And then you see dogs that you say, oh boy, I hope they're not out there when the pheasant season opens <laughs> because they get crazy. But I love especially watching this, the, uh, the springers, those spaniels, they get in that thick stuff, man. They, and they put up birds like there's no tomorrow. And I've seen guys that they don't want to go in that cover. <laughs> They, so they send the dog in. And I've seen pointers. They don't want to go in that cover. And setters, they don't want to go in that cover. You get a springer, people. They'll get it done. A Brit adds a little bit. I'm sorry. And they, I, I, but I digress. I just love watching the dog work. Listeners, again, birds will be stopped for today, the 14th, 21st, and 28th in the area. Aspen, Pink, Collier's Mills, Manasquan, Stafford Forge, Glassboro, Millville, and Tucko. Nate, before I let you go, has there ever been any discussion about, you know, adding an area or two? There has been, and we're always open to those types of discussions. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if if uh, people have ideas on areas that are underserved, we'd always be willing to look into that and discuss those and increasing those opportunities. See, this is and as this as far as dogs go, I'm I'm partial to uh, flushers. I have a lab, and like oh, I said, uh, yeah, they bulldoze. They'll man. go through anything. And stuff that I'm not going to go into. Nate's uh, Nate's lab has been known to pull for exercise a Dodge 3500 Ram, just for exercise. I've seen it, Nate. You got a big ass dog. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, you take care. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you in the field, little brother. Yeah, by the way, how's that great family? Uh, they're doing really good. Just uh, right now, very busy with sports and after school activities. So, you know, hunting's coming, hunting time's coming at a premium right now. And then unfortunately we had some time set aside for youth archery this year and there you go. We got rained out. Oh, but oh, That's we'll right. find some time. We'll get out there. Now. Great job. Now, Nate, uh, your bureau lands management also stocked the ringnecks and the Bob whites, correct? Correct. Great job on that to listen again for the $40 pheasant quail stamp. You can't beat it, especially if you get to go to Tuesday and the Thursday. And Nate, I'll tell you, we will, it's when you figure out what you pay to preserve for a bird for the opportunities here again, preserves not as crowded. You pick your times and I'll tell you, they, I'll, I'll hunt everywhere from Wallpack, Flatbrook down to, to the McNamara, Tucko track and many spots in between. I'm very fortunate in that regard. My time allows me to do that. Hey, there's birds everywhere sometimes, man. It's crazy. You guys do a great job with that, man. But I'll tell you, we're right. Those pheasants take off. Were they still my? They take off like the Concord, and they keep going. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> you take care, man. Great job to you and the crew. Thank you very much, Tom. Have a good one. You too. Yeah, birds be in stock. It is that time. Okay, have a good break. Be right back. Rack and Fin Radio. They're stocked today, 14, 21st, and 28th. Go to njfishandwildlife.com for more information on that. Next three weeks for you. Get that, get that dog out there, man. Get the rust and dust off. Be right back. Rack and Fin Radio. Yogi Boo Boo. Where be you? So what is Talk With a Purpose? It's a lively, informative, number one rated talk show on Saturday morning. Hi, this is John DeMassey. Join me and my guests every Saturday from 9 a.m. till noon for Talk With a Purpose, heard right here on WPG Talk Radio 95.5. And if you miss it on Saturday, we replay it on Sunday from 5 until 8 p.m. Don't miss Talk With a Purpose, Saturday and Sunday, right here on WPG Talk Radio 95.5. South Jersey's talk station. 
Fox News, President Biden says he is legally obligated to use border wall funds appropriated by Congress during the Trump administration to build 20 new miles of border wall. National Border Patrol Council Vice President Art Del Cueto reacting on the Fox Business Network. How are they going to find them? They have no idea where these people are already in the United States. So what they need to do is go back and admit that they were wrong the entire time. Building up the wall and better barriers is, is a start. President Biden pleased with the September jobs report showing employers added 336,000 new jobs. The unemployment rate has stayed below 4% for 20 months in a row. The longest stretch in 50 years. The UAW did not expand its strike against the big three automakers on Friday after GM agreed to hire union workers for its electric vehicle battery plants. America is listening to Fox News. Your WPG Atlantic City Electric AccuWeather forecast for South Jersey. Cloudy, warm, and humid overnight with a couple of showers and a thunderstorm. The overnight low 64, mostly cloudy Saturday and breezy with a little rain into the early afternoon. Outdoor plans can be impacted high 72. For Saturday night, mainly clear, breezy and cooler, low 46. Sunday breezy with partly sunny skies, high 62. I'm AccuWeather's Drew Shannon on WPG Talk Radio 95.5. Rack and Fin Radio with Tom P. WPG Talk Radio 95.5. Just touch back on the Bruins of Bear season that opens Monday, okay? Go to pages 46 and 47 in the digest for all the particulars. Now, segment A is going to be Monday, October 9th to Saturday, October 14th. You can archery hunt. During the entire week, but archery muzzleloader, you can use a muzzleloader Thursday, October 12th through Saturday, October 14th, mandatory check station. You get a Bruin, you have to take them to one of the check stations. There are going to be some in, there's going to be one in Warren County, the Peak West Management Area, Morris County, Black River Wildlife Management Area, Green Pond Golf Course, in Sussex County, Black, uh, Flatbrook, Roy Rather Wildlife Management Area, and Whittingham Wildlife Management Area. Again, go to the digest page 46 or 47 of njfishandwildlife.com. Yeah, that was Ed Conley earlier talking about the fall trout stocking. Happy New Year. Hey, man, another great freshwater stocking is underway. It's going to be, they're going to wrap it up next Tuesday and Wednesday. Big loads of channel cats going out north, central, and southern portions of the state. Every man's game fish probably my well, you know, I'm a trout addict. We know that. But freshwater overall, I love my pickle, love my pike, love my hybrids, like my walleyes. Like I am a channel cat aficionado, uh, really getting started and getting hung up on these flatheads and blue cats. Yeah, article in the Fisherman magazine, tangled up in blue. Cats! Well, yours truly, but some big monsters kind of, channels are, channels are the cog in the, in the freshwater fishing scene in the Garden State. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands are stocked in waters everywhere. Great for the urban angler. Great for the suburban angler. They can live just about anywhere. They fight well. They bite easy. And they, they taste pretty damn good. Join us on the line with an update on the Channel Cat stocking for this October is Craig Lemon, a Bruin buster of no repute by any stretch of the imagination. He is the superintendent of the Hackettstown Hatchery. Craig Lemon, one, you got your Bruins picked out, bro. I'm ready to go Monday. Yeah, Monday evening. He's ready to go. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, yeah, I've seen some busters up your way, man. I was I just had uh, yeah, Parker or something in Parker's space up on on the radio opening segment. I was after that earlier area earlier this week. There are some monster Bruins. You're seeing them walking around door to day, Craig. This is great. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I got my 500 pounders already on the wall, and I got five life mounts. Model what am I going to do with another one? I don't know, oh, man, oh. but I'll uh, I'll I'll uh, I'll take some of those hams and ribs off your <laughs> off your hands if you need there you them. Go. We're at the big sausage grinding party. Oh, I can yeah. do that. Hey, man, I'll bring the suds, but not yeah. Bud Light. No Bud Light. No Bud Light allowed. Well, Craig, let's get to no. this Channel Cat stocking. You, you stocked earlier this week, and you have Tuesday and Wednesday next week down here in South Jersey. This Channel Cat program. Let's talk about it. It's every man's game fish. I contend. And uh, you agree, and Craig, it's a win-win all around. It's been crazy since we went stocking these bigger fish. You know, when I first started 35 years ago, we stocked six-inch fish in the fall, and I just never thought those fish lived. We switched the program around to stocking 12 to 14-inch fish, and you you, uh, you go on NJ Fishing or any social media now, 
like everybody's holding up channel cats and they're all, you know, a lot of them are two to five pounders. Yep. So it, it's nice to see, you know, it's, it's great on our end to see, you know, the success of the program, the people catching the fish. Yeah. And great. And, and they're and, everywhere. Like you said, from high point to Ponder Lodge they're Yeah. And from the Delaware river to the ocean, they're, they're up statewide. I have an article coming out next year. Uh, listeners, the editor doesn't know, but I'm going to, I'm going to blindside him with it. Sandbag Tom Pete. That's me. Coastal kitties. You're right, Greg. These yeah. coasts, like Deal Lake, so Como, some of those other lakes down there along the coast, these channel cats get huge, man. Yeah, we were at Como yet this week, and there was like a pile of people fishing, and we asked everybody, and they were all fishing for channel cats. So that's it, that's man. pretty cool. I saw a guy. Yeah. Uh, he had yeah. one. I don't know if it was from Deal or Como. Yeah, it was probably eight or nine pounds, and he showed me photos that had a duckling in its gut. Are you kidding me? You always think Pike doing that and Muskie's doing that. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. They are... Everybody thinks that, you know, channel cats are, they'll eat live bait just as easy as they'll eat cut bait. So, yeah. yeah. Well, Greg, listen, yeah. you have 11,000. Listen, this is a great part. The minimum uh, length that I was 12 inches, you have 11,000, 12 to 14 inches going out, ready to catch and ready to eat. So you have catchable yeah. legal fish. Big difference, Lemon, big difference over previous years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, and we're hitting your honey holes, Birch Grove, Heritage, you know, Ponder, Swedesboro, Woodstown, Mary Elmer, GMP Trail, oh. you know, Oak Oak Pond down there on the. That's going to be the next biggie, probably that Oak Pond and SRO. You yeah, know, that's right behind. There, that's right behind the South that. Region office. Yeah, right there for Ryan Evans. Yeah, yep. Oh yeah, man, that's a, that's a, I I I mohawk the trout back there in the spring i think it also stopped yeah, in october. Yeah, i think they yeah. stuck in yeah, october november too yeah oh it's gonna get hit but yeah. right now the channel yeah. cats picking the waters i mean now i know what you guys breed them up there is there any documented maybe the lab could answer this better any documented uh channel cat natural reproduction oh i'm sure i'm sure you know they do in the delaware river so i'm sure in all the tribs probably and a pack on spruce. I think all the big, all the big water bodies guaranteed there's natural reproduction going on. The big, the manasquans, places like that where it's water stays warm for a length. Mm. There's lots of places, crevices. I'm sure that all those were big rip rap dams, like probably round Valley. We don't stock channels in round Valley and there's, they catch big bombers in there. So yeah, I'm sure that it's, it's happening. Shout out to, uh, know? he was, he was a biologist at the time, Sean Krause, he's now the bureau chief. He did a gill netting survey in November for Lakers. I have a photo of him with a channel cat, Craig, every bit of 10, 12 pounds from round Valley oh, from by the South yeah. tower. <laughs> it is amazing. Yeah. Well, Craig, let's, let's get into yeah. I'm fascinated with the channel cats getting into, okay. You breathe me. You got these, well, you got to go to go. Oh, Craig posts this great stuff and go to njfishandwildlife.com. Click on the freshwater fisheries channel. Got something. You have some great photos. You get these huge egg masses, right? Then what happens? Yeah, that's, What's the that's process? The, that's the kid's favorite thing. All our seasonal kids, it's like a big competition who can get the most eggs. And what well, we put in, you know, when the water hit 75 degrees, usually June 1st, we put 30 gallon barrels out in a pond. There's 200 adult fish there that range between like five and 15 pounds. And then once a week, we go in there with just waders, and we kind of noodle them out of the barrels. You know, you kind of chase the cats out, and then you bring the egg masses in. And they're like, like you said, now those huge fish have huge masses. Yeah. So some of them are five-pound egg masses. They're like basketball and size, we, man. <laughs> yeah, we bring them, in, bring them into the building, and we use a chemical, uh, sodium sulfide, that, that breaks the egg, the matrix down, and we put them in hatching jars like you would for, you know, trout eggs and stuff. Five days later, in 80 degrees of water, they hatch, and they're, like, super easy to raise. Those fish grow fast. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they grow, they grow an inch every couple of weeks, you know, like an wow. inch every 10 days probably. So, Craig, yeah, now they're on, like, a crazy. mash feed first. When do they go yep. to pellets? They go quick. I mean, it's like every week you got to change feed sizes on them because they're in 80 degree water. That's one thing that when yeah. they built this facility in Hackettstown, they built it the right way to grow fish fast. Like uh -huh. we talk to other states and they're like, how do your fish, you know, our fish are one inch. How are your six? And I'm like, because we <laughs> raise them in 80 degree water. You now, know, it's Greg, that, an extensive that's culture, true. correct? And, and so far being outside then, right? Extensive's outside, which, you know, yeah. which is how we get our eggs. But we do it like the hybrids and the, you know, there's a lot in the building right now that's right. intensive culture. And that's how you really grow the fish and you keep the predators out. 
you know, there's no cormorants, egrets, herons, oh, minks, otters. Yeah. They're not in the building, so you can control it. Yeah. Now, Craig, every few yeah. years, I remember I took the photos down there at Heritage Park Pond. You had two drivers. It was, it was during COVID. I mean, you guys still stock a fish. We have what, what Lemon refers to as the bomber channels. These things are like B-52s. Yeah, super, super cats. Super yeah, cats. Deep, super cats. Now, yeah. that's, what, that how many years? Next year? Year. That, maybe next year. You had that fish. might be next year. Yeah. We yeah. try to rotate those brood stock. They you were know, huge. The fresh egg. Oh, yeah. This, these fish down here today, you know, on our pond now, we're, there's a lot of them in that 12 to 15 pound range. I Easy mean, they're double digit they're just, fish. Yep. And yeah, now, now, Craig, yeah, they, the return, could, the return on what you're stocking this week and next. I'm going to be up in later next week. I'm going to uh, full full disclosure. Pete, top P is oh, top P is everywhere. I'm going to be camping up in Stokes. Fall trout be stocking. An uh, yeah, Aquatunk right there. Flatbrook, so my cousin and Aquatunk. Yeah, they said you got yeah. all your trout stuff. And I said I catch trout all the time. I said I'm trying some new cat. Shout out to Ronnie Jones, ACP Outdoor Products. I'm trying some new catfish baits. They said. Yeah, but they got the two-year-old trout. So I'm going to get I'll, I'll maybe fish for the trout Saturday. I'm keyed in Thursday and Friday next week. I am keyed in on those channels in Aquatum because I know, let me, I know there's holdovers there through the summer from what you stocked last year. Oh, yeah. Big, big fish. Yeah. We had some guys, no guys saw some guys catching no up there four or five pounds this spring on trout power bait. Yep, yeah. Plus, we were in your backyard over there in Branch Brook this weekend. Oh, you my know, old stopping grounds, I got, yeah. I got the stock at the lion heads. The lions, yeah. man. Did you see the hill there behind? That's when we were as little kids, five, six years old. That was where we sledded in the winter. And if you yeah, made it down no, the icy yeah. side, you made it down to the steps. And I understand. Listen, <laughs> what? Uh, and you also, uh, Orange Park Pond. Orange you, Park Pond, Verona. Yeah. yeah, we hit all the – Essex County's got a pile of ponds over yeah. there. We hit them all. Craig, you know, even if it's small numbers, 25 fish, 50 yeah. fish, you know. Craig, yeah. on the overall, would you say, just your opinion as a professional wildlife, you know, fisheries biologist, what have you, and, and running, uh, the, the, you know, the Hackettstown hatchery, channel cats, I always say every man's game fish, probably the most versatile fish stocked in the Garden State, is it not? Yeah, I would think so. For stocking programs, yeah. I mean, everybody got their, you know, you have your large mouth and we stock, you know, a hundred thousand large mouth a year too, but channel cats are just putting those catchable size fish in makes, you know, makes all the difference. There's no doubt about it. And Craig, not much, you know, we didn't sm- see any cormorants, right. you know, this week it was nice, Thank God. you know, I don't know if they migrated or something, but the, we didn't see a bunch of them. That was, that was a pleasant surprise. Oh, yeah, because they, they they wreak havoc in the spring, oh, yeah. especially. But, Craig, spring again, from, from urban, suburban park ponds to tidal waters, brackish. Uh, we catch channel cats down there off 611 in Corbin City. You get them in the Bass oh, River yeah. right there in New Gretna. Yeah. They are, and also yeah. on the Delaware Bay side, it's – it's forget the – I like my brook chart. Don't get me wrong. The channel cat should be the garden safe. I'm going to get a petition to get that started, Lemon. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm with. I'll sign. Oh, I'm, Craig. Sign me up. <laughs> Thanks yeah. much. Hey, uh, good luck this coming week again. Great job uh, with the channel cat stocking, the pike stocking, the walleye stocking, the, kids, the yeah. hybrid stocking, the musky thought, stocking. Kids, yeah. The kids are out on Spruce Run Reservoir right now with the big boat float stocking hybrids. Oh you know, man! Don't, don't forget the don't forget those landlocked salmon. They're coming up at the end of the month too. So oh, we got, okay. We got it all here, man. Let, yeah. We got everything here, pal. Everything yeah. is here in the Garden State Sweet Waters. Craig Lemon, great job. Yeah. You kick ass, man. Thanks, we'll see Tom, you sometime Pete. in the next couple of weeks. Take uh, care, bro. We'll be, yep, you too. Hey, wait, wait, real fast. Regards to my main man, Ronnie J. Okay? Ronnie J's in the rehab facility here in town, but he's hanging tight. Okay, man. You know, he put his papers in. He might retire January first. We'll see. We'll keep an we'll keep an eye on Listen, him. Listen, don't scare him and tell yeah. him I might visit him. You know, he might, you know. <laughs> Yeah. We'll catch you later, would, Craig. Trust me, he would enjoy it. All okay, right, man. We'll see you later, man. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, channel cats out there, man. Don't change the channel. Kitties in the cities. Be right back. Rack and Fin Radio. WPG Talk Radio 95.5 FM and 1450 AM. 
South Jersey's talk station. It's Pete from Chickie and Pete's, the official sports bar of your Philadelphia Eagles. Here's a winner for football and Chickies and Pete's mouth watering snow crab legs. For a limited time, buy one and get one free snow crab legs every Tuesday and Wednesday. Enjoy the sweet, delicate flavor of snowy white crab meat dressed in our special blend of seasonings and spices. Pair it with an ice cold draft beer or one of our signature cocktails. Buy one and get one free snow crab legs every Tuesday and Wednesday for a limited time. Restrictions apply. Chickies and Pete's. Hi, it's Pete from Chickie and Pete's, and we are prouder than ever to partner with the Philadelphia Eagles. Chickie and Pete's has been named the official sports bar of the Philadelphia Eagles, and we continue to serve as the official caterer of both Eagles training camp and the official caterer of the First Trust Bank Club at Lincoln Financial Field. Go where the players go. The official sports bar of the Philadelphia Eagles, Chickies Pete's. Rack and Fin Radio with Tom P. WPG Talk Radio 95.5. That'll do for this week on Rack and Fin Radio with me, Tom P. Get out there and enjoy a little gnarly weather on the week, but so what next week? The seasonal changes here. Okay, we're going to get rain. We're going to go in. It's just it's time to get out there and get it done. Trout stocking happening. Channel cat stocking happening. Dog training going on. Squirrel season going on. Rabbit season going on. Uh, North Zone Duck season is going to be opening pretty soon. Just a lot of, and both season. Ooh, are you starting to see some, uh, indications of the rut? Mm-hmm. Don't be surprised. I'm hearing some, uh, some stuff about some, uh, bucks already going out. Hey, don't forget, it's not too late to join the LBI 69th annual surf fishing classic 2023. Over $25,000 in prizes, including a new 2023 surf master prize. The tournament runs October 7th through December 10th. Go to www.lbisfc.com to register or go to, what's it, uh, Fisherman's Headquarters down there in Ship Bottom. Shout out to Greg Kudnick and that great crew down there. God bless America. God bless our troops. God bless our first responders and law enforcement. Just remember to permit application period now open through October 31st for beaver and otter trapping. Yeah, we got to get mention the trappers in here. Oh, man, the otters are Every what's the limit? One there's otters ever. Tell it some of the guys in the lagoons that have their spot pens. No matter what you do, these things somehow find a way to get in. See you next week. Rack and Finn Radio. Get out and enjoy. Glorious October is here. Lots going on.